Well, it's a beautiful day in Boise, Idaho, and Chris is at a commercial building, and he is painting a wrought iron fence. He's using Rust-Oleum oil base paint. There's one person with us. If you're with us, let us know you're here. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to give us a call. A call. Feel free to. Oh, Michael's with us. Hi, Lewis. Hi, Exol. Kevin Jones is with us. Hugh Jass. Hi, Alan. Danny from Florida says you guys are awesome. I think they're having an awesome moment right now. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Ricky. Hi, Gabriel. Hi, Cody. So Chris is painting a wrought iron fence, which his Apollo sprayer, HVLP sprayer. So probably in the 80s in Boise. So this is a sprayer he's using. If anybody has any questions, we could ask him. Rod iron, not rod iron. Yes, I know. It's been a long day, Brian. Hi, Matthias from Brazil. We have not been to Spokane yet, but thanks for being with us. We were at Pullman last weekend, moving our daughter out of her place, which is just, I guess, south of you guys in Spokane. Oh, sorry, Brian. I've been out here all day. That was all me. Hi, Sean from Fat Brush from Moscow, Idaho. Yes, we were just up there last Saturday and Sunday. Okay, Brian, he's really beating a dead horse. Um, we know Lisa put that in there, not right, and I will fix it when we're done. But if anybody has any questions, um, I could get him to stop. Is that electrostatic? No, it is not electrostatic. It is a HVLP sprayer from Apollo. And he is using a Rust-Oleum oil-based product. He did sand, Lewis, and here we go. See, there's the sander. He used the Eka sand. And then he did use a um, primer. So if Afton could find the primer that we used in the product, I can show you guys what, we, what he used. What PSI does he have his sprayer on right now? So awesome to hear, Color Tech. It is very fine, and if you look, there really isn't any overspray. I guess like about a foot, but that's why we have tarps and cardboard shields. So Afton has been our helper, and this is the product we use for priming it. So the first step was sanding it, and so that was rusty metal, because you can see they put it right on the grass, and so the sprinklers hit it, the edgers hit it, and now this is the top coat that he's putting on it right now. Yeah. So those are the two products. How many coats does it need? Well, this is a question that Chris will have to ask, answer. So somebody wanted to know what PSI you were doing it at? 6.2 PSI. 6.2 PSI. How many coats? Uh, well, we sanded it. Uh, we sanded it and did spot priming with a uh, rough primer. Then we were spraying two coats on it. Okay. 
Any other questions? And did you have to thin the product? Uh, I didn't, so that was one of the nice things. So the product, I did not thin it, took a risk, and it's been sprayed perfectly with a, um, this is a HSD cap and nozzle, which is um, the Apollo with the atomizer 7700 gun, and I'm using a 1.3 needle. So no thinning, which is really nice, and it started spraying using a two-quart remote pot and a three-eighths inch hose, and which is a larger hose, so it's able to push it through without bending it. So this guy says you need to put a good sealer on first. Is that what the primer was? Um, the, primer, the primer is um, for rust, so there was some rust on it, so we did a rust it. But this is a, an industrial coating that can go on bare metal, so it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be primed, even if it's on bare metal. We're only putting on a rust and tip and prime it because there's rust. And so if people can see through the fence right now that the the brown or rust colored, that's the primer that you put on it? Yeah, the brown, like you can see it on this side, there's brown all over it. So the fence, a lot of it was in still good condition, except the bottom stuff getting hit by the sprinklers. Somebody said you should use electrostatic. Um, if you want to give me electrostatic, I'll use electrostatic, but um, that's not my budget right now. So this is working just fine. This is how I've done um, iron fences for a long time, and it's worked just fine for me. So electrostatic is obviously a great way to go. You got the money to do it. So you're using the Apollo. Which one is that? I didn't know he was coming to Boise. So compared to brush and rolling, it's going to be the finish and it's going to be the speed. How long would it take you to do with brush and rolling? So he said if he brushed and rolled it, it would be three times longer. So that is the benefit. And you can see it's a really fine spray that's coming out. So it's not a lot of overspray. So he's not wasting a lot of product. If anybody has any questions, um, Yes, Ronnie, I do know that I wrote wrought iron wrong. That is on Lisa. That is a long day in the sun. Yes, we would not be using an airless sprayer with this product because it is oil. PPG is sold in Idaho in Home Depot. Yes, we do ship to Australia, no. Does it make a difference if you do the spindles first or the top of the handrail first? If you look at Chris, and he's creating a video on this right now, he does have a system of how he sanded it, how he prepped it and primed it, and now how he is applying it. So we are using Rust-Oleum today. Thank you, Alexander. I hope it helps you. This is the first time we have used this product, Ellen.
That's awesome to hear, Ethan. Share your work on Paint Life members. He is using an HVLP gun. You could, but he's using an HVLP. So this fence was very rusty because of being put right in the grass. And so he did a lot of sanding earlier today. Somebody wanted to know, is it a rust-free product? I will show you the product. This is the product that he's doing right now. It says, tough rust prevention finish for industrial application. And then this is the primer that he used. Rust inhibitor for heavily rusted metals. It is oil-based. supposed to be more durable and with it getting hit by the sprinklers and the weed whacker and how easy it rusts we decided to try this product. The mask is an easy mask and we just got them into our store. So this has the remote pot up there, HVLP sprayer, the new product. And you can see he's going from one side to the next. I can show the sprayer. See, it's at 6.2 PSI. It has a remote pot. That is the Apollo. Well, we learned a long time ago that you can pay off one of these sprayers quite quickly because he would use the airless sprayer and waste so much product and so um, you save on that chris where can you buy this sprayer oh we sell it on our store now we sell it on our store now yeah so do you like it but um it's the best hlp sprayer that i've ever used and gone this is the uh, Atomizer 7700 gun right here. So it's my favorite gun. That's the limited edition Apollo Precision 5. It's the best that I've used for um, doing fine finishes, cabinetry and stuff. So I really like it. So, so you have a cap spray too that you like also? I do have a cap spray. I got a Titan cap spray uh, 115. I actually have two of them. And I've got a Titan cap spray 105. And I really like them all. So they're, they're great. I think this is just a step up that's a better gun um, than the cap spray, the maximum elite gun. The cap spray 115 will spray heavier materials. So if you're trying to spray like latex paints and stuff like that um, without thinning as much, uh, the cap spray is a six stage turbine. That's a five stage turbine. Um, this has, a, you can dial it in. It's a lot more um, precise when it comes to 
what PSI you can dial it into. It has a digital readout. You can dial it in at the, the pump it's, itself, and um, that's exactly what it's going to be at the gun. So I mean, I could run it down, you know, to four PSI up to like six point five PSI um, at the machine. You can dial it in uh, pretty nicely. So. So when you use the airless sprayer to do a fence like this, how much more product did you use? I mean, so far I probably used a half a gallon on here. This fence probably, I would have used in probably a gallon, you know, on this fence. An airless sprayer would probably be four to five gallons. Okay. A massive amount of overspray. So even with the smallest tip, like a 210, 110 tip, dialing the pressure down, just huge amount of overspray. And we are by car dealerships, so that would not be a good thing, right? Yeah, um, I don't want to really um, pay to have all these cars detailed, so I'll stick without doing the hairless fair. <laughs> Any other questions? We do not sell currently the Titan. Um, So we are live at a commercial building in Boise, Idaho. It's about 85 degrees. It's a beautiful day. Um, he is painting. Um, are you on YouTube? Yes, oil-based okay, so, paint. Um, you guys are on YouTube, so you're on YouTube. Um, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the, the notification screen. bell right next to it. Because if you don't hit the notification bell, you're not going to get notified every time I come out with a new video. I got two really cool videos coming out this weekend. So subscribe, the notification bell. Otherwise, you won't get notified. It's free, simple. Is there a cheaper version of that sprayer? Um, yeah, so Apollo does make um, cheaper models. So um, you just go down and, you know, size of the pump, um, compressor and stuff like that. This is uh, got a remote pot system on it and stuff. So I can run the gun without a cup. So it's got a two quart remote pop. It's got its own compressor right on uh, mounted on top of the unit stuff. So it's, it's, it's an amazing unit. So. Don't forget to subscribe. If you guys got any questions for me after this, leave it down in the comment section below. Got a master. Athens got a master for me. Okay, uh, so um, can you put an extension on it, a gun extension? No, I, somebody's asked, some people have asked that before. So um, this isn't an air sprayer, so you don't put gun extensions on this. So um, no, uh, gun extensions go on the gun of an air sprayer, not HGLP sprayer. So good question. Okay. okay. Um, well, it's not as hot. Somebody was like in Arizona, it was 112. Yeah, it's not too bad here. It's like in the 80s and stuff. So um, if you guys want to you know, purchase our swag, it's on our store. Shirts, like Afton's shirt. Um, so any more questions? Because we're going to, well, we could watch him do a little bit more. Oliver, thanks for being with us. Can you spray latex with it? Yes, you can. Do you have to thin it then? Yes, you do. Cyberpunk says oil-based products out of cap spray equals sticky paint or sticky tarp, sticky nostrils, even sticky mask. Yes. Thank you, Seth, for sharing. Zach Anderson said, are you worried about car overspray? No. Okay. 
I'll try and get really close. I have it dialed in like, I mean, it's dialed into just a very fine mist in a little circle about that close. So I'm not worried about any overspray. It's not windy enough. It's not gonna carry, you know, any farther than a few feet. But if you were worried, we wouldn't be doing this, right? Cause we're no. by all these car dealerships. No, we wouldn't be doing it. How are the masks size? I know medium, large, and extra large, but what determines the size? Neck measurement? Um, there's a chart on our um, site that will tell you what size you need. There is a chart if you go to our store.theidahopainter.com and it will tell you how to size it. Um, because of what's going on in the world, masks are hard to get, so we only were able to get a few larges so if you're a large we'll sell one to you oh okay i'll do my best to keep it steady um no we do have the size large of the rz mass um so you'll have to check it out Can you get a good enough finish to spray kitchen cabinets? So this is, this is what we actually use to paint all of our kitchen cabinets with. So yeah, you get an absolute amazing finish with uh, water-based coatings, industrial coatings like Renner. And so we use airless sprayers to paint houses, but we use HVLPs for fences, like you're seeing right now. We use HVLPs for kitchen cabinets. What else do we use HVLPs for? Fences and cabinets. That's what we use them for. You guys are awesome. I'm literally like going to school. I've learned so much from you guys and I got a Fuji. Oh, let us know how what you think of that Fuji sprayer. We haven't used one yet. Thank you, Philip, for being with us. Yes, HVLP. And this is the first HVLP um, Apollo. They're the grandfather. They're the ones that first made them. Yes, masks with these gloves are all high commodities right now. So we are doing our best to try and get gloves um, and mask and safety wear um, available to sell in our stores. So we have orders in and we're waiting. And as soon as we get them in, if you are interested in buying on our store, you just push notify me if something's sold out. And then once it's in stock, you'll get an email and you could have the chance to purchase it. So we want to make available um, all our stuff. Where is Senior Jasso? I don't know who that is. Oh, that's nice. Hey guys, miss y'all. Yes. Lewis, we're very glad you're with us. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe and um, able to work and take care of what they need to take care of. Um, thank you, Ethan. So, Kojo's with us from Ghana, and he wants to buy some cutting brushes from your shop. Buy them and we'll send them to you. That's funny, Jason. Yeah, I think today those pants went over 5% dirty. So, Jason, since you um, remembered him saying that, something like that, that's when he gets rid of them. Um, if you go to our store.theidahopainter.com, and there's a, a button that you want to contact us. Say, I'm the winner on your live show and we'll send you a $25 gift card to buy something at our store. So all you need to send us is your email address and we will email that to you. And I'm thankful that everybody hasn't been out in the sun all day and um, points out that I wrote wrought iron wrong. I haven't been to school in a long time. 
Chris recommend Titan or Graco HVLP for cabinets. So he obviously recommends the Apollo because that's what he's using right now. But um, he's also used Titan and Graco and likes them. I think Titan would be number, would be another one he'd like with the Apollo. The Apollo LE uh, Precision 5 or a Graco or I mean a uh, um, Titan Cat Spray 115. That's two great pumps. Anybody has any more questions? What's the spray pattern that Chris uses? On uh, here, it's, it's a circular pattern about this small. Uh, Round or wide? I'll show you. Wait. That's definitely round. Definitely round. What material are you using? This is what we're using. That is the primer and that is the paint that we are using today. This paint had a lot of rust because it's grass growing underneath it. So it's getting watered every day and the weed whacker is hitting the bottom. So he really wanted something that's going to protect it. So Philip said, Fuji system's great. I'm sure it's equal to the Apollo without all the bells and whistles. You get far as digital reading out. It's the Court 5, Q5. He did not thin the product. Do you have a Ford cup ratio? Uh, I didn't. So I brought my Ford cup out here, but I didn't thin the product. So um, it says you can thin it up to one and a half times with acetone. And I brought a Ford cup, but I didn't actually test how thin it was. Because so I just poured it right in and started spraying with it. And it's um, it sprayed straight out of the can. So I don't have the ratio because I didn't thin it, so um, there you go. What is the best face nose mask recommended to use while spraying? Face mask? Yeah. Well, I'm using a RV mask right now. It's not right. I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, Philip, you'd have to go to our store. We do sell the paper cutters and the plastic cutters, and they are sold separately. We were surprised about that. Um, but we do have those on our store. Tomba, thanks for being with us. Yeah, we realized quite quickly once we use the HLP, um, how many jobs it would have took to pay for it. So here's the, the mask I'm using. So I started using these because we're just so much more comfortable. So it's a RZ mask and it has a charcoal filter, replaceable filter inside, and they're easy to put on. They're, they're super soft, super comfortable. How far from the surface is the tip when he sprays? What's the setting on your fluid control and your air pressure? So the air pressure DSI is running 6.7, which um, the air is all the way out. So, because I control it at 
the pump right there, get the HVLP pump. Um, the fluid is, it's about, um, well, we'll go one, one and a half turns out is my fluid. That's what it's set at right now. Now you can just adjust that, you know, to adjust the amount of product going on. You could adjust the PSI if you're concerned about overspray. So. Well, I wrote wrought iron wrong, Chris, and everybody's just loving to tell me that. Can we see the pump? Yes, we can see the pump. This is the pump. Oh, Paris, I am sweating. So I wish I wasn't sweating right now. It's very hot out here. A touch of wind just blew. Uh, a slight breeze. Yes. So uh, I'm gonna. Be concerned. I'm gonna show how big this fence is, and you could tell people how much product you've used so far. Uh, let me see here. So that's empty. So that is what he's painted so far today, and I'm moving very slow. Do you put signage up for cars for overspray? So I've used three quarters of a gallon. So he's done all that work for three quarters of a gallon. There's a sprayer he's using. He's been using Rust-Oleum and he has not put up signs for cars warning them about overspray. And why is that? Because uh, I'm not concerned about it. I'm not gonna get overspray on any cars, so. Uh, It'd be really hard with that needle size yeah, I mean, that, and pressure. I mean, I'm, it's only shooting out, you know, um, it's got six PSI that it's put now. And so an airless sprayer, you're going to be running at 2,200 PSI to 3,000 PSI. Um, or even if you're dropping it all the way down, like with an HEA tip, you're at like 800 to 1,000 PSI. So 1,000 PSI versus 6.7 PSI. I mean, you're just barely... Um, I mean, here's, let me turn it on, I'll show you. Um, so I could never, I could never take a, an airless bear, put my hand in front of it because I could get paint injected, which could kill me. I mean, there's the PSI. So it's that soft. That's the air coming out with any, out any product. If I squeeze the trigger a little bit more, now product comes out. And so, you see. Where's the second video of airless spraying prep? When's it gonna come out? Um, this is a good question. Uh, I thought it's coming out tomorrow. It is tomorrow. Uh, I believe, so I believe the, I think the airless spray with the set ones come out from? Yes. Airless spray. Yeah, the, the gables. Um, so it's like the gables, spraying the gables on the house is coming out tomorrow. That along with painting a wood sign. So something. Two videos? So two videos, painting a wood sign on how to go about painting it, multiple colors, multiple layers, fast and easy. There's not a good a video out there on YouTube painting wood signs. So if you got a routed wood sign, um, I put a thing on Instagram just showing you what it looked like really fast in 56 seconds, but I'm gonna give you all the instructions how I did it on YouTube. So. 
Time to go. We okay, got to finish gotta, this. I got to get the rest of this fence done. Because I don't want to like, I could come back, but this stuff is nasty. And I chose to do it because of the condition of the fence. It's a really rusted um, fence on the bottom. And I wanted something, you know, that's like an industrial coating. that's going to be, um, it's going to bond, you know, and, and um, help stop and inhibit rust. So I use the rust inhibitor primer and it's going to better, um, you better corrosion resistance. It's a high traffic um, railing right here. It's going to be more chip resistant. So I chose to go the nasty route, the oil route, rust oleum. So um, for durability. So I'm suffering here today. I don't want to get all nasty and dirty again because my pants are trashed. And I'm kind of bummed about that. I should have worn a monkey suit, but I did it. Okay, oh, well. we'll show a picture of the sprayer you're using. How do we stop it? With this phone. Right there, the X. The X marks the spot. We're out. I'm gonna get back to work.